Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In previous episodes, we're talking about testing. Again, in this episode, we're going to do some more testing. And this time, we're going to talk about testing our jobs. So we have, uh, we started with model and sort of just this um, very isolated test for simple methods on models. We're going to step up one level now and do some testing for some of our jobs. So if we jump into our app models directory here, we have this user model that is a device user model. And you'll notice that one of the things that we added was that after this user is saved, so after commit, we want to call this create stripe customer callback. And that is going to kick off a job to create a stripe customer later that is related to this user. And so one of the methods that we might want to test as part of um, testing our user, but even more specifically testing this job, is that when this user is saved, the job is actually like in queued. And we could make other assertions about where the job is actually like set up. Is it in queued as default or whatever? And we could probably test this in isolation. So just testing like, oh, does perform later actually in queue the job and set it up where we want? Um, so let's let's actually do that. So in the user model, let's say um, it in queues uh, a or the create stripe customer job do and and I think we can say something like this. We want to expect that create user to have in queued the job uh, create stripe customer job. Okay, so I believe we wanna, this is kind of like the rough place that we wanna start is that when this user is created, that active record callback is executed and enqueues that job. And so the very first error that we get is saying that the active job matchers need to be set up. So in the same way that we set up a queue adapter in development and in production mode, specifying that we wanted to use like rescue for our queue adapter backend, we need to do the same thing in test mode and we're gonna set the queue adapter to test. So in the environments test, RB uh, like environment configuration at the very bottom. I'm going to say config dot active job dot uh, Q adapter Q adapter is equal to this symbol test. Now what this will do is it'll say that when we're running tests, use the test Q adapter and I believe that should work. So let's run this again. And okay, factory is not registered user. So we haven't actually like created a user factory. So let's say rails G our spec uh, model for the user model. And this will create um, the, I guess we already had a user spec, but let's just override it because um, we were just kind of messing around in there. It will also create a factory for our users factory. And that's the piece that was missing was it, it didn't have a user factory. So let's open up the user factory here and look at the user model. And the user model is gonna have some required fields. So the password and I believe the email address are not null. So we need to have some way to set those. So let's say we're gonna say email and this is gonna be, um, uh, let's say sequence uh, email and we're gonna say, we're gonna return hello plus um, a number at cjav.dev and that will be our email and then our password can just be like, secure random dot hex or something like that so that we have a test password. All right, let's go back to our, uh, our user test here. Um, I thought that we had written a, oh, you know what? Yeah, our, our spec is now borked because we, we blew it away. So it um, enqueues the Stripe customer create job um, on commit. Do and okay, and then we're going to go back to the user model here. And this is again the method that we're testing here at the bottom. And we're going to say expect that create for user dot to have in queued job the uh, create stripe customer job. We'll run this. So just creating the user model as soon as it's committed to the database, it should enqueue that job. So that looks like it's passing. Again, let's comment out the code since this is legacy code. We want to comment it out and we'll comment it back in as we go. And it says it expected it to enqueue it. It did not enqueue. So that's the failure. And then we can comment back in and watch it pass. And now we are successfully passing that uh, that first test. All right. So one thing that, okay, so this is, this is kind of handy, whatever, like, but in practice, we probably want a, a spec specific to the job. So let's do that. So Rails G R spec 
job for the, um, I think it's Stripe customer create is the, the name of the job. So this should create a job spec for us for this job. Now, if we come over here, we can, um, we can say something like, uh, let's actually look at the, let's look at the job itself. Um, Stripe customer, oh, create Stripe customer job. So I, I did it wrong. So create Stripe customer job. And we'll want to change the name of this to the create Stripe customer job. And okay. Uh, create Stripe customer job spec. Um, oh, I spelled customer wrong. Customer. Uh, okay, so now I can tell that it's named correctly because I'm able to use the colon a command that's part of our, the RSpec Rails Vim plugin, and that jumps me between the job and its test. And so here we can see that like in the test itself, when we perform this test, it's expecting the user ID for the user that was just saved. We're going to look the user up, and then we're going to perform this action on the user. So we want to say like it uh, like creates a Stripe customer and saves its ID to the user. Now, in practice, we don't actually want to hit the Stripe API. So there's a couple different options for solving this. Number one, we could use a combination of a couple different tools, VCR and WebMock. That is one alternative. Another way is to use sort of uh, stubbing or we can stub out this class so that instead of actually making the API call, we can sort of put fake methods onto this class so that we, we rather than actually like using the underlying Stripe Ruby client library, we're just gonna make our own return value for create. And that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna say, um, in, in order for this method to run, we want to, we want to allow Stripe customer to receive the create method, and then we're gonna return our own thing. So I'm gonna say, um, allow Stripe customer to receive create and return, and then we're gonna give it an object to return. And in some cases you could put like a, a mock in here or a dummy object. In this case, I know that I can just initialize an instance of the Stripe customer and pass in a specific ID that I want to use down below. So in this case, I'm gonna say cus uh, test, that will be the ID of the Stripe customer that's returned. And we wanna set, we wanna set up this like allow block at the very beginning, and this is gonna stub out this class, meaning like it's gonna kind of replace the create method on the Stripe customer class of like the Stripe, like the, of the, the class that's returned by the underlying Stripe Ruby client library. So that we're like uh, replacing that create method with our own method that is gonna be defined as like something that returns this. So that we don't actually hit the API, but instead we're gonna return a new instance of a Stripe customer That'll be stored in this variable and then used over here when we are updating with this customer's ID. All right, so now that we have stubbed out the Stripe customer method, let's also make our exercise. So we've kind of done the setup piece here that is doing the like the setup for our test and we need to do exercise and then finally we wanna make some assertions. So our exercise is gonna be something like this. We're gonna expect, we can pass a block to expect that will run, and then we can make assertions about what happened inside that block. So we're gonna say, um, let's do create stripe customer job dot perform, dot perform later. And we're gonna pass in a user's ID. So we need to create that user. So user equals create user. And then we want to say that this, we expect this to uh, have enqueued the job create Stripe customers job. And now that is actually like the stuff that's inside of the block, that's our exercise. And then the expectation around it is, is also our assertion. Um, all right, so this is ensuring that, that the job is actually being enqueued. Let's also make another test here that we will use to actually run the job. And we want to make assertions about that um, so it, it, this, this doesn't actually create the Stripe customer and save its ID. This is like, this uh, enqueues the job as expected. And then this one will actually create the Stripe customer. We wanna remove the wrapper around that, uh, that expectation and then switch this to perform now. 
And now what we need to do is we actually need to refetch the user from the database after this change happens to the user object. So we can say expect that the user dot stripe customer ID to equal uh, cus test. Uh, however, this should fail because the customer is not actually, uh, or this user object here is the same user, the same variable reference to the object that we created above, and it has not been updated to represent the changes that happen inside of the job. So before we run this expectation or the assertion down here, we need to also reload the user. So when you say user.reload, and that should refetch all the data out of the database that was modified as part of the job. And so now we have a passing test. We want to actually go back over to our um, to our implementation, comment all of this out, and then execute this again, and watch it fail. And then we can comment it back in, and we will notice that this still fails because um, it is expecting that the user is refetched from the database, and this is, I'm sorry, that the user is actually updated. So now we're updating the user with that last line in our job, and now we have pretty good coverage for this specific job. So in this episode, we learned about stubbing out this Stripe customer object. We also learned about enqueuing those jobs and saying that it has an enqueued job. In the next episode, we'll make some more assertions about different things in some more isolated tests for some plain old Ruby objects that we have for interacting with an API. So stick around for that one if you're curious. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.